greetings from home institute uh, today we will discuss equal area criteria so this is a very important topic uh, in power system stability especially to determine the transient stability of the power system there are uh, n number of methods uh, uh, to determine the transient stability of a system but uh, this is the one method uh, very simple and also very important for gate engineering service exams and PSU interviews etc so what is equal area criteria we will going through it uh, very briefly but uh, before understanding of equal area criteria the first important thing is we need to understand the swing equation and its importance because the swing equation is the base for understanding the stability of a synchronous machine or a stability of a, a power system indirectly so that's why first we will try to focus on swing equation and we'll try to understand what are the parameters in swing equation and the importance of swing equation later we will derive a condition for equal area criteria then we will see some case studies and also we'll see some examples and numerical questions so in the part one we will see swing equation i'm not going to derive a swing equation here i'm going to explain directly from the equation now what is the swing equation of the synchronous machine now the swing equation of the synchronous machine explains the complete dynamics of the synchronous machine okay now the swing equation is written as m d square delta by d d square that is equal to p m minus p e okay so you can write the swing equation in per unit or in actual form now suppose if it is in actual form and per unit what are the things will change i am going to explain first now this is for example in megawatt okay so where m is the momentum momentum the units of this momentum is otherwise first i will write the formula for momentum m equal to gh by pi f okay and the units are here mega joules seconds per electrical radian otherwise megawatt second square per electrical radians because mega joules can be written as megawatt into seconds now that's momentum you know what g g is what mva rating of the machine mva rating of machine which is basically an mva where h is what inertia constant inertia constant now the simplified units of this is in seconds otherwise mega joules for mva i think wrong to say seconds now f is the frequency you know that so this is a momentum if this formula is written in terms of megawatt suppose if this formula is written in terms of per unit generally how to convert this equation to in per unit form by dividing the actual with what base mva the actual equations we need to divide with base mva that means the both the side i am dividing with what base mva if i divide megawatts by base mva i will get it in what here per unit this is also in per unit but what is m now is not gh by phi f it is simply what h by phi f nothing wrong to say i am written m in per unit form now in that case the units will become not mega joules simply what second square per electrical radians so be careful the swing equation either you can write in per unit form or you can write in what megawatt the only difference is here when you write in per unit the m units are second square per electrical radian when you are writing this pm and pu in megawatt the m units are mega joule seconds per electrical radian or megawatt second square per electrical radians and h and g will not change and the next important thing is here what is pm and pe well known that the pm is the mechanical input to the generator mechanical input to the generator by default i am explaining the swing equation for generator not for motor if you want to write generalized means input power minus output power simply speaking input power minus output power the input for generator is mechanical output per generator is what electrical power that's why pm minus pe now what about for motor it is pe minus pm input is electrical power output is mechanical power so for a generator pm minus pe for motor it is pe minus pm so pm is the mechanical input to the generator because 
here i am taking only generator for time being now what is pe that is what electrical power output of the generator now these are the things we need to know initially and one more important thing is this is the sinc equation we have written by neglecting the damping of the synchronous machine suppose if this is a synchronous machine rotor this is a rotor of the synchronous machine see finally what i can say is here so where m is the momentum you know but apart from this momentum there is a, a damper winding which is provided on the rotor that contributes for damping term if you really consider the damping term okay generally we neglect for analysis point of view but for example you are consider the damping term then the swing equation will become like this m d square delta by dt square plus kd into d delta by dt that is equal to pm minus pe this is the swing equation if you really consider the damping effect contributed by the synchronous machine rotor again i'm saying on the rotor we place a, a damper bars or simply speaking damper winding that indirectly helps in stabilizing the machine by killing the uh, oscillations in a quicker manner so generally for analysis point of view we neglect the damping term because the equation become very simple and hand calculations will be very easy okay but for equal area criteria generally we assume that the damping term contributed by the synchronous machine is zero okay now the damping term is zero here okay so that's why the swing equation is this now for example this is the mechanical input and this is what electrical output to the synchronous machine mechanical input here and this is what electrical output this is for a generator action right and one more important thing we need to conclude here is the rotor angle delta and how the rotor angle will change because these are the things which are very important for understanding the equal area criteria how the rotor angle will change generally under steady state mechanical power and electrical power is what same and m d square delta by dt square equal to what zero here that means there is no acceleration or what deceleration for the synchronous machine okay so for further understanding of this what i can say here is we can write the swing equation like this m d square delta by d d square that is equal to pa what is that pa called this pa is called accelerating power accelerating power means the difference between mechanical power and electrical power and one more thing also i can write here d square delta by d d square that i can write alpha that is equal to what pa by m now this is also called acceleration now these things are really important for understanding equal area criteria now what i can understand from accelerating power it's very very simple my dear for example i am writing about the generator action later i will explain motor action okay for generator action if mechanical power equal to electrical power i am writing about initial initial case mechanical power equal to electrical power na then accelerating power is zero rotor will be neither accelerated nor decelerated that means no acceleration and no deceleration then rotor speed is maintained what constant the rotor speed is always maintained constant suppose if mechanical power is greater than electrical power na then accelerating power will be positive and we say rotor is rotor is accelerated accelerated now what happened because of rotor acceleration the rotor speed will increase for example rotor speed is for example let's say 1400 rpm it will start increasing from 1400 rpm but don't come to a conclusion that rotor speed is going above synchronous speed it may go above synchronous speed for example before rotor is get accelerated the rotor speed is synchronous speed then the moment it get accelerated na the rotor speed is going above synchronous speed 
suppose before the rotor is not get accelerated the rotor speed is less than synchronous speed then what happened it will increase but from where it will increase not from the synchronous speed from the less than synchronous speed so that's why initial state is very important here again i'm saying for understanding initially rotor speed is 1500 rpm suddenly it get accelerated it is increasing from what 1500 rpm suppose at present rotor speed is what not synchronous speed maybe it is 1400 rpm then what happened rotor speed is rotor is accelerated means rotor speed is increases definitely it will catch what synchronous speed it may go above what synchronous speed also depending on the situation whether the rotor is accelerated or what decelerated okay if the acceleration is continuously present rotor speed is continuously increases even it is going above what synchronous speed right now coming to the next point that is if pm less than pe then the accelerating power pa is negative now now we say our rotor is decelerated rotor is decelerated and rotor speed now decreases rotor decelerated now definitely rotor speed will decrease now this is for generator action again i'm saying rotor speed decreasing means don't think that rotor speed is less than synchronous speed we can't say the initial speed is the matter here suppose initial speed is 1700 rpm synchronous speed is 1500 rpm initial speed is for example 1700 rpm suddenly the machine experience the deceleration means it will decrease from 1700 it may catch 1500 or it may go further below 1500 or it may be what huh? maintained what more than 1500 that depends on how much time this deceleration is maintained so we will get more clarity on this huh, when you go further but at this stage very simple acceleration means rotor speed will increase deceleration means rotor speed will decrease that's it nothing else okay so that's about the acceleration and deceleration how it is affecting the rotor speed okay and one more thing also we need to discuss here the rotor angle how it will change okay the rotor angle change if you want to observe now you need to see only two things what is the rotor speed what is the synchronous speed okay now for better understanding i am writing here now in case of generator action now in case of generator action generally in generator action the rotor is ahead of synchronously rotating reference frame i am assuming this is this is a synchronously rotating reference frame synchronously rotating reference what is the meaning of this synchronously rotating reference it itself is saying that it is rotating with what always synchronous speed okay so it is always rotating with what synchronous speed assume that it is rotating in what anti clockwise direction at what speed sir synchronous speed now what is the rotor angle first generally many people have a uh, wrong inception about the rotor angle actually rotor angle is not the angle between stator magnetic field and rotor magnetic field actually what is rotor angle is it is the angle between rotor magnetic field with respect to resultant magnetic field otherwise in simple words it is the angle between it is the angle between rotor mmf with respect to resultant mmf otherwise it is the angle it is the angle between rotor angular position with respect to synchronously rotating reference axis that means generally rotor angle is is the angle which is measured from rotor angular position from where from synchronously rotating reference frame in case of generator action generally rotor is ahead of synchronously rotating reference frame for example initially let's say this is what the rotor position this is the rotor position for example let's say this is the position of the rotor under steady state for example okay yeah this is what the rotor position now this is called rotor axis you may also say rotor angular position at some point now this is rotating with what speed rotor speed this is rotating with rotor speed 
and this is rotating with what synchronous speed for example if the rotor also rotating with synchronous speed this angle is maintained constant just think that this is this is what rotor angular position this is a synchronously rotating reference axis both are rotating at synchronous speed both are rotating at synchronous speed this angle deviation is maintained constant angle deviation is maintained constant for example if the rotor speed is what going above synchronous speed what, I, what is the meaning here this fellow is always rotating at synchronous speed now this rotor is going above synchronous speed now rotor speed is going above synchronous speed now let's say this is 1500 rpm this is 1600 rpm then what happened with respect to time with respect to time this angle will what this angle is what increasing because this fellow is rotating more speed this fellow is rotating with constant speed then with respect to time this angle deviation will increase okay so what i can write here if the rotor speed is greater than synchronous speed the load angle will simply increase if rotor speed is less than synchronous speed the load angle decreases now at the same time if the rotor speed is equal to synchronous speed now then the load angle is maintained constant now that is for generator action for motor action things are reverse why because in case of motor action the rotor angular position will fall back to the synchronously rotating reference frame in the direction of rotation but in case of generator action the rotor angular position is always ahead of synchronously rotating reference frame now that's about for generator now you think about for what motor anyway i'll briefly explain for motor situation but you write down all the equations separately okay now what is for motor quickly i will say pm equal to pe na accelerating power zero no acceleration no deceleration rotor speed is maintained constant if pm greater than pe pm greater than pe means what machine is not accelerated decelerated why because for motor this is the equation okay pm greater than pe na then what accelerating power is negative not positive now rotor is what accelerated or decelerated it is not accelerated it is what decelerated if rotor is decelerated and rotor speed will what decrease now if pm less than pe pa is positive rotor is what now here accelerated and rotor speed is not decreasing it will what increasing this is for what motor action not generator action this is for motor action and similarly what about here is the rotor is not ahead the rotor fall backs in the direction of rotation now this is what the rotor position indirectly this is what your rotor position eh, in the direction of rotation the rotor position and this is what the synchronously rotating reference frame which is rotating at synchronous speed this is rotating at what rotor speed suppose if these two are rotating with same speed synchronous speed means angle is maintained constant suppose if the rotor speed is what more than synchronous speed then what it is approaching here and the load angle will what decrease if the rotor speed is less than synchronous speed now the load angle will increase so that's why what is the equations i can write is nr greater than ns the load angle will decrease nr less than ns the load angle will increase and nr equal to ns the load angle is maintained constant now these are the the basics for understanding of our equal area criteria so we just understand what is swing equation the swing equation means it explains the dynamics of the synchronous machine and also we just seen the swing equation in per unit form the swing equation in megawatt form what are the differences and also we have seen the importance of acceleration deceleration and how the rotor speed will change how the load angle will change for both generator and motor action now that's about the part one of our equal area criteria in the next video we will see uh, the derivation for equal area criteria and later we will go into case studies and further we will move on to the calculations of critical clearing angles and critical clearing time all the best